There are two kinds of people in this world, the ones that love Pokemon, the ones that could care less about Pokemon. And I'm one of those people that absolutely love the franchise, and even though I absolutely adore it, I haven't played every mainline game, and I probably won't end up playing every mainline game. I have not played X or Y, or Sun or Moon, um, just simply because the ones on the 3DS seem like they've really became dumbed down, or just different in terms of where they were at in the Game Boy Advance era and even the DS era. I really enjoy those Game Boy Advance titles, Fire Red, Leaf Green, Sapphire, Ruby, Emerald, and I also enjoy the ones before that, though I consider the GBA ones to be kind of the peak of the mainline Pokemon games. So you can imagine I was absolutely shocked about a decade ago when I found out that there are many other Game Boy Advance Pokemon games available. Now they're not true Nintendo games, they're fan-made ROM hacks. Now basically what these are, is, I would say there's two different types of ROM hacks. There's the ones that take the original game, say Fire Red, and they just put all the other Pokemon in it so you can catch you know, this huge massive 500, 600 plus Pokemon Pokedex in a GBA game. That's all fine and good, but what I like are the ROM hacks where they build upon really the sprites and the core. So what people do is they take the ROM files that you would use to play, say, Emerald or Fire Red, and they modify the files in order to create a completely new game. And there's all kinds of tools out there online that can help you create a ROM hack. The process is difficult, it's long, however, it doesn't totally have to require complex computer programming skills so it is something that anybody could do if they wanted to take the time to learn how to do it but I want to talk about the ROM hacks that are available for you to play ones that people have created and they've released online and they're these new Pokemon stories that are fan-made that you haven't played yet that you might want to check out and of course with these being Pokemon ROMs they have to be played on an emulator so you could play them on your phone, you could play them on your PSP. I've talked a lot about the PSP emulation, how that's great for playing Game Boy games. So lots of different ways that you can play a Pokemon ROM and, a, and even a hacked Pokemon ROM because it's just like any other GBA ROM. Now there are ROM hacks for the Game Boy Color, the original Game Boy, the DS, but the Game Boy Advance is really where the bulk of them are and that's what I'm gonna focus on. Now I should also mention that a lot of these hacked ROMs do have physical releases, typically on sites like Etsy, where they do sell a GBA cartridge loaded with that custom ROM for something like 10 or $12. I'm fairly certain that in 90% of the situations, the person who actually made the ROM hack is not the one selling the cartridge. Also, they would get in big trouble if they did try to sell a ROM hack. So obviously, I would avoid buying those. Now, if we're going to talk more about the legality of these fan-made ROM hacks, uh, it's something that I think Nintendo has tried to push away for a long time, but oftentimes what you're really downloading when you download a ROM hack is a patch file. You then have to apply that patch file to an original uh, copy of the ROM. So if it's a Fire Red ROM, you would have to find the Fire Red ROM, then take the ROM hack patch file and patch it over the top. But of course, because the internet's a big place, there are plenty of places where you can find the ROMs already patched and ready to play, so you don't have to do that step. And the site that I typically recommend for checking out a wide variety of ROM hacks is the Reddit site r slash Pokemon ROM hacks, which I will have linked down in the description because there is a wiki page on there that does contain a ginormous list of so many different ROM hacks divided by what generation the base game is from. I would highly recommend checking out generation three ROM hacks because that's gonna give you the ones on Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, those ones that I think the bulk of the good ROM hacks are available on. Now, I haven't obviously played every ROM hack that is out there, but one tip that I will tell you when you're looking to find one to play, especially for your first time, is go ahead and find one that is finished. There are a lot of them that are released, that being fan-made content that's made by an individual, it gets released in a sort of beta or alpha stage where it's not complete, 
and you are only able to play up until you know the second or third gym or however far they have done find something like liquid crystal which is complete and play that first because if you want to have the experience of playing through an entire pokemon game like as though it's a retail game you're obviously going to want to find a rom hack that is complete and there are plenty of download links on the reddit site for being able to find these so it's fairly easy once you get on there i thought that the game boy advance era was my favorite time for pokemon games and seeing so many rom hacks available on that platform just tells me that there is you know years and years of playing ahead of me if i want to try and complete all of the fully finished games that were fully developed because you know even though there are probably hundreds of partially finished rom hacks out there that have no end in sight that will probably never be completed there's also a great quantity of completed rom hacks out there for you to play and of course you can find them on the reddit page so again i recommend you check that out link will be down in the description i'm bailey and i will see you in the next video